Hi everyone, I wanted to share with you my favorite way to cover and protect all of the books and notebooks and other things that I use in my life. I've been doing this for over 20 years now. It has been very, very helpful. I probably have covered at least several hundred books. And so this is a tried and true method for me. I don't know if you're like I am, but I am very, very hard on my things and I'm also very klutzy. I spill and get things dirty and things like that. So it really is a great way to protect and strengthen all the different books that you have in your life. If you carry things around, if it's portable, you want it to be really durable. And so this is one of the ways that you can do it because not every book out there, as you know, is going to come with a really nice hardcover or even a really nice spiral type of binding. So here's some examples of things that I have covered. This is one of my old traveler's notebook inserts. I covered this because this is regular scrapbook paper, so it wasn't very thick. So this also makes it thicker and it also makes it more durable. It, the covers, the corners right here don't bend as much and show a lot of wear and tear. It also keeps your stickers down right here. This is another thing that I've covered with the spiral binding. This is actually two pieces because of the spiral binding and I just cut right along here with the spiral so that keeps it again. This is an example and this is actually what I'm going to be showing you today for my demonstration. If you've seen my review on the top down planner, you know that I've had problems with the cover. It shows fingerprints a lot. It also, I haven't even started using this and it's already showing wear and tear here on the corners. And so this is going to be my way of making this last a lot longer. And I wanted to show you this one because this is my, one of my children's favorite series, the Berenstein Bears. And I'm sure if you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. These paperback books just do not last very long. This book right here is over 20 years old. And yes, it has some wear and tear. The pages are bent a little bit right here, but for a book that's over 20 years old, this is in really, really good shape. And with these paperback books like this, after a couple of years, as you know, all around their rooms and in their bookcase and throwing them back and forth and you know loving them to death. Normally this would have been in the recycle bin after a few years but we still have it and they still love it. And then I've also done things like cookbooks. This is one of my favorite people in cookbooks, Brendan Brazier, and I've just covered this one as well because it just had a paperback cover on it. So there are a lot of advantages for doing this. What I'm, like I said, what I'm going to show you today is covering the actual top-down planner. If you have book-bound planners like this, this is a great way to do this. What you're going to need is very simple, just some contact clear paper and then some scissors. I brought this to show you. This is lamination. I haven't actually tried to do the books with this. Originally, how I got this idea is I would go to the library and they, I would check out a lot of their paperback books and they were in really good condition and they had some kind of protecting or I'm like, how in the world do you laminate a paperback book? And I think that this is what they use, but I am really comfortable with using this clear contact paper as well as this is a lot cheaper than, than the lamination. I do think that this probably would work if you have that and want to go that route. There's another product out there that's the frosted one. You do not want this in general because you're not going to be able to see through clearly to the cover. Obviously that makes sense there. And so this roll right here, this is your average roll and you get 24 feet in there, which is a lot. And I will show you, I'm, the reason, another reason why I want to cover this one is because this is a standard type of book. This is an, like an A5, which is about a five or six by eight inch type book. So this is in general, the size that you're going to use. And so I've already done the math for you. With 24 feet, that is 288 inches. On average, you're gonna use about 10 inches for each book. So that'll give you 28.8 books. So we'll just round that down to 28. The average price of this right here is $6.50. So if you divide that all up, it ends up being only 23 cents per book to cover it, which I think is amazing. I think that's a very cost-effective solution because you're not gonna to have to buy books, especially the ones that you love on a continuous basis, you know, every five years or whatever. And it's just going to make things last a lot longer. So like I said, this has been working so well for me for many, many, many years. I don't know how many rolls of clear contact paper I've gone through. I've lost count. That's how many I've gone through. But I have literally covered hundreds and hundreds of books in my house. And it's just been really great. 
So let's go ahead and get started. I already have a contact role that's open. And another thing I wanted to mention is you, of course, are not going to be able to use this entire thing every time you use a book. So you're going to end up having like little scraps like this and of different sizes and that's totally fine. I actually keep mine as you can see because it does come in handy if you're labeling things around your house or something like that. You can just use this clear contact paper over it. So I have found some other uses for that. So let's go ahead and just get started with this. Really the most difficult thing is going to be because this is on a roll, it does kind of roll up as you can see. Let's get this out of the way. And another tip that I have is to make sure and try and, and instead of doing this, what would this be, vertically, you want to go horizontally right here because you're going to end up with less waste this way because if you do it this way right here, you see that you're going to end up with all of this being wasted and very few books are going to be this size right here. So you want to, if you can go this way, of course there are larger sizes of books out there, but I don't know if you can see this, but I usually do about an inch all the way around and this is nothing fancy here. I don't even measure. If you can see with the contact paper, it comes with grid lines, so you're going to be able to cut along there. So I just find the closest one and I actually do not cut. I slice. So once I get it started, I just start going along and it's going to be a little bit difficult because I'm showing you, but that's all I do. So I end up with this and then you take the book and you actually carefully go over because you want to include the spine in there for your measurement even though it's, as you can see, it's nothing great over here and then same thing, you're just going to cut along the closest line and that one is not straight. If you want to fix it, you can, but because this is clear and you can't really see it, I don't know, I'll do it just for you guys because it's probably going to bother somebody, but it's really not that big of a deal if it's not completely straight. And then you want to start on the back of the book. So you're just going to tear. The hardest thing sometimes is starting it, so it's easier to start it at the top and the bottom. And you don't want to tear it all the way off the backing right now. You just want to take this part right here first. And let's see, we need to go this way. As you can see, this is, this is the hardest part, is just getting this started because it wants to roll up on you and you're trying to just take part of it off the backing. Sorry about the crinkling, I know that's obnoxious. Okay, so then you're just going to lay it down flat just like this and you, you just kind of eyeball it and line it up as best as you can. And this is where you're going to start. So that's good right there. And then you're just going to Take a little bit off at a time and you're just, I just smooth it down with my finger. I don't even use a tool, but if you want to use a tool, it's kind of, I feel like it's kind of like if you've ever done wallpaper where you have that little tool thing and you apply it and straighten it out with that and make sure there's no bubbles. And then you just go over the spine, same thing, just like that. Smooth that out and then let's get all this, this out of the way. Going around the spine, you just want to make sure there's no bubbles, same thing, so you just kind of pull it a little bit straight like that. Again, you just smoothen it as you go. There's a little bubble and sometimes those can come out from the top and get smooth. Okay, so there you go. It's all covered up on the book. Now when you get it to this point, I don't know if I have one to show you, but it does take away a little bit of the color just because you're putting you know, that clear covering on it. That is not a problem with me. I would much rather have something like this where it's covered than have like the full vibrant cover if you, if you understand what I'm saying. Now right here on the corners you can do two things. You can do an L shape, cut it out L shaped like that. I don't know if you want to call this lazy or efficient. I always just do a diagonal to cut off the corner. So if you can see, I just cut it like that and go on the back and do the same exact thing. Sorry, I'm right-handed, so I know you can't really see. I'm trying to get that out of the way. Okay, so you've got all your corners stuck. And at this point, because these are kind of, for lack of a better word, exposed, then you just kind of like use your finger and just go around the cover just like this. And just straighten that out. And then there's your 
on the other side. So let's go ahead and do the front one. And then here is your next thing. Now you can do, again, you can do a couple different things around right here. And sometimes on these books, which I think this one actually has one, you can see right here that the glue is a little bit farther down than the actual other pages of the book. And so I'll show you how to get around that. But in general, you're just going to cut same thing, kind of just at a diagonal. So you end up with this like parallelogram kind of a thing. Same thing on the bottom. And then I've really, I've done this so many times that really the only way to make sure that this fits exactly is to just at this point, because it's got these pages like this, if it doesn't have that issue right there with the glue, then at this point you're going to be able to just go ahead and put it down over the cover like that, but because I'm going to hold this up so you can see, you just, at this point, you can kind of tell where it is, so you just have to make another little cut right here, which is a triangle, and just cut that part off. And again, you're not going to have to do this on a lot of your books, but it's just kind of the way that the, each binding is on each book is what you're going to have to figure out. All right, one more. Okay, now on this book, we're finally ready to do it. And as you can see, if I did my measurements correctly, this should go just perfectly down right there. And this is the problem. You guys have seen that before. I have a problem with the binding. But this will at least help the cover be a lot more durable. And then again, this one. That's how it looks on the inside if you're curious. So as you can see, you can, you can tell that it's there, but like I said, it doesn't bother me. I'd much rather have this because it just gives me a little bit of comfort and peace of mind if I ever spill something on the cover. Okay, it's completely done now. So if I, you spill something, now you're able, it's kind of, I wouldn't say waterproof, but it's definitely water resistant. You can wipe things off with my children's books like this. You know they're gonna get really dirty. Same thing, there's this little spot right here. You can just kind of like, either use a damp cloth or use your finger and wipe that off. But it just makes it a lot easier and more durable. This one, I'm not sure if you can see it, but right here, all I would do is take the paper and the contact paper and just start right here. So you want it to get, you know, to butt up right against where the, the binding is, but you don't want to cover it into the binding because it needs to be able to go over that spiral and turn easily. So you don't want anything covering that or any adhesive to get on that part, but just, just go right up against where the binding is and just go through that same process, but you'll have to go through it twice for each page. And so that's how that one looks. You can kind of see the contact paper where this one is. So really, any, any book, children's book, coloring books, I mean, I didn't bring my coloring books in here, but coloring books, any spiral bindings, recipe books, anything like that, this will be a very effective method on how to do that. I have shared this with all of my friends and family. They've, they've kind of seen what I've done and they have really loved it and implemented it into their own lives. And so I just thought I'd share with that with you today. So hopefully that will be helpful for you and you can take this idea and run with it for your own life. Thanks for watching you guys. Bye-bye.